Hello and welcome to the third part in the tutorial series on programming in C. In this part we're going to look at the declaration of variables and some simple operators. What I've done is I've taken the file that we had in chapter 2, the ch2.c, and I've saved that as ch3.c and I've removed what was inside the speech marks in the printf function. So I'm starting for something like this. So what is a variable? A variable is something that can vary by definition of its name and it's simply a container for whatever we want to store. So if we want to store a number we declare an integer, what's called an integer variable, a number variable, we can store any number we want. If we want to store a character we declare a character variable. Um, if we want to store a 64-bit number we store declare a 64-bit variable. In this tutorial and for most of the upcoming tutorials, we'll simply be dealing in integers, that is, whole numbers, which can be negative or positive, floating point numbers, which are decimal numbers, and characters, which form strings. In this tutorial, we'll have a look at integers. And to declare a variable, you simply type int space, so say I want to declare an integer, and we'll call it my number 1, and we'll give it a value 10. And this has declared a variable of type integer, so a whole number, remember no decimal point, and giving it the value of 10. Now if we want to print out the value of this number, we can simply say my number 1 equals, and now type a percentage and a d. And what that's doing in the printf function this is known as a format specifier. If you want to read in more, a lot more detail about these, you can go to the c++.com website, forward slash reference, forward slash cstdio, forward slash printf. And in here is a big description of the printf function, what all of the format specifiers do for various number and character types, and a larger example program here, looking at it as well. For this tutorial, though, I'm going to stick to just printing the integers. So we have what's called a format specifier. So when printf goes to print everything between the speech marks here, when it sees a percentage, it says, aha, something else apart from simple characters inside these speech marks should be printed. What format should I print? And the D tells it to print simply a decimal number. And then you actually have to, after the speech marks, type in a comma and then tell it which decimal number, in our case, my number one, you actually want to print so that it knows which ones to choose. So if we save that and compile it, we should, we won't do it quite yet, have my number equals 10 printed out. Now my number 1 here is a variable and that means the value can change. So if below here I now type my number 1, I don't need to type int because the compiler already knows what type it is because I've told it up here. When you first declare it you have to specify the type but then you don't need to. So I can now say my number 1 equals 5, and that's now changed the value from 10 to 5. And if I copy this line and paste it below here, now it'll print my number 1 equals 5. Now one more thing, well, actually no, I'll show you in a minute. First thing we'll do is save that and now compile this. So we'll go to the console. You should have nav navigated, hopefully, to the directory, if I type dir, which contains the ch3 file, ignore that ch3.exe, that's something I made earlier and forgot to delete before the video. So if we compile this file, a gcc ch3.c, as with the previous two chapters, a dash o, and our output will be ch3. It's compiled, and now we can run this ch3, and we see my number 1 equals 10, which is printed here, because it's a value of 10 and now we can see my number 1 equals 5 and here you can see we've printed after changing my number 1 equals 5. Now aesthetically it's not very pleasing here because really what we need is a new line or at least a space here. So what we'll do is at the end of printing the number here we'll add a, a new line in and for that you simply do a backslash followed by an n. And a backslash, an N, simply is interpreted by printf as a new line. So when I save this, compile this again, run it again, 
Now they're both on two separate lines and things are a bit different. So that's why it's called a variable, because its value can vary. Now you can define constants as well. If I type C-O-N-S-T space before the integer, I'm now saying my number one is a constant integer, so we'll always have the value 10. And now when I try and compile this program, I'll just delete this blank line here so things are a little bit smaller. When I try and compile this program, it'll complain at me because on this line I'm resetting the value to something else of my number one, which is now a constant, not a variable. So if I go to compile this, now I've got a complaint here telling me that on line eight, and here it's saying in German, but it's basically saying you're trying to change the value of a read-only variable called my number one. So very specific what the problem is there from the compiler. And this is very useful when you're programming because a lot of the time you'll be using in your functions various values which you don't want to change. And if you set the constant keyword before these values, then when you go to compile your program, if you by mistake in your code do change the value, the compiler will catch it and shout at you and won't compile the program. And this is a bacon saver on many, many occasions, and certainly has been for me, where you unintentionally alter a value in a function by setting it as constant at the start, then it, the compiler won't compile if you alter the value anywhere down the line. This is particularly important with functions, and when you start chaining functions together, if your initial values going in can't be changed, you can set those in the functions as constant all the way through. Again, the compiler complains, so it's a very, very important thing to note. So I'll take away that constant now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare int my number 2 and call that 6. I'll just use the tab to line that up a bit better. So now I've declared another variable, not a constant, another variable called my number 2. And I'm going to declare a third one here called int my result and set this to 0. You should always, when you declare new variables, in your programs set them to some kind of value again it's a bit of safety because you might expect my result to be zero if you don't set a zero here but that won't always be the case when you run the programs your programs and that can also be a really hard to find trap when you've got a large program with lots of complicated calculations going on and you haven't set but rather you've assumed a value of a variable it's always best to set it straight away at the start of the function. And now we're going to look at what we can do with these numbers. And we're going to look at the simple classic for plus another operators. So at the moment we have my number one equals 10. I'm just going to be lazy and copy and paste in there for sake of speed. And my number two equals, and I'm going to, oops. Now, just for clarity here, I said earlier that we had a format specifier here and it looks for, it's the first occurrence of please print uh, a variable of the format decimal number here, so an integer, and it takes the first one. Now, after the next comma, the next format specifier then takes the next one. So we're putting in my number two here. That should be fairly self-explanatory. So the first line here will simply print the values that these are at the moment. And now what we're going to do is take my result and set it to equal my number one plus my number two. And all being well, the value of my result, I'm just going to copy this and paste it onto here, should be here 16, one would hope anyway and I'm going to put a new line in at the end of that as well. I'll take those two lines and paste them and now let's do a minus. And my result is now going to be equal to 10 minus 6 so it should be equal to 4. In fact what I'll do is I'll put in brackets here the operator used as well so we know and just copy that and paste it into here. So we used a minus And now we'll do a multiplication, which is the asterisk, asterisk or star, 
which we'll do here. And again, I'm going to paste in here. And now I'm going to say divide. And that will give a, a result that we're not expecting because you have to remember that we're dealing here in integers, so whole numbers without any decimal places. So that's going to give us a result that doesn't have a decimal place, but it's not going to give the result that you're probably expecting. I'll save that now and compile it. And now run it. So with plus we've got 16 as expected, 10 plus 6. With minus we've got 4. Multiply 10 times 6 is 60. And my result with the divide is 1. 10 divided by 6, which in reality is 1.66666, comes out as 1. And the reason is, is when you divide two integers, well, whole numbers without decimal places in C, it rounds down to the nearest whole number. It doesn't round up. It simply ignores the remainder or the decimal places. So you have to bear that in mind. It's critical to always remember that. So if you're doing arithmetic and you start involving integers, then you're going to lose your decimals. And you have to remember that. And you have to use something called float variable types instead, which we'll go into in the next tutorial. But what is useful here is something called the modulo operator. And I'm just going to copy these two lines and paste again. And that's as a percentage. And when you want to type it, you might be wondering how you type a percentage in a printf statement when you're already using the percentage to specify that you want to print a variable and then specify the format with a letter. Well, you simply put two percentages together. So we'll save that file and now compile. And now run. And now you can see it gives the result for what the modulo does is divides the first one by the second one and then prints the remainder and at first when you first see this you might think why would I ever in the world want to use that well it actually becomes particularly in the chess program a really really useful operator which we'll see much later on it allows you to do a, a lot of clever tricks particularly when you're using files and ranks on a chessboard so that's what the module operate modulo operator is for okay that's about it for oh there's one more little thing actually I wanted to show quickly when looking at the values of variables. I'll just delete, well no I won't delete, I'll make a little gap here. What you can do when you want to say take a number here and you want to add 5 to my result or let's say my number 1. You can say equals my number 1 plus 5 and that will then set my number 1 to 15. What you could also do however to shorten it is say simply plus equals 5 and both of these mean exactly the same thing. If you want to add 1 you can use add 1 instead of 5 you can use this format and put a 1, you can use this format and put a 1, or you could write my number 1 plus plus simply. And that increments this variable by the value of 1. I'm not going to, for the sake of time now, print these out to the console. You can do that yourself if you want to. But these are all ways of increasing the value. And to decrease the value, you can use the minus and the minus here and minus minus here would decrease by 1. You can also, to divide, put the divide in and the same is with the multiply and the multiply. So if you don't want to use a second variable or you just want to do it like this, I hope that makes sense, you can alter it simply by doing this. So this step in here multiplies 10 by 5 would give us 50. This also multiplies the variable by 5 and this here decreases the variable by 1. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. It's again quite short, but I want to keep all of them as short as possible so that you don't have to sit there and watch code being typed on the screen for an hour at a time. I like to keep it to around 15 minutes. I hope it made some iota of sense. Comments and questions are welcome as always on YouTube, as are criticisms. Till the next time, thanks very much.